President Trump signed new executive orders today after meeting with big business and investment chiefs at the White House. One of the orders eliminates a rule requiring financial advisors to act in their clients' best interests. It is the first step in unraveling Dodd-Frank, an Obama-era law meant to protect consumers after the financial crisis. The president calls that law burdensome. We expect to be cutting a lot out of Dodd-Frank because, frankly, I have so many people, friends of mine, that have nice businesses, they can't borrow money. The second executive order directs the president's treasury secretary to submit a report on potential financial regulation changes within four months. The jobs report that came out today points to a strong economy. 227,000 jobs were created in January. The unemployment rate ticked up to... 4.8 uh, percent, and that's because more people re-entered the workforce. But the number of underemployed did rise to 9.4 percent in January. These are people who work part-time because they can't find full-time jobs. At the White House this morning, President Trump talked about the January employment numbers and his plans to overhaul the financial regulations in the Dodd-Frank financial law. I'll take a look at a few minutes of his uh, remarks. Thank you everybody for being here this morning. This is a really world-class group. And I want to thank and congratulate Steve. You have done, as usual, an amazing job. Steve called me up uh, the day after the election. It might have even been the same night, Jamie, to be honest with you. You know, Steve, probably not. In fact, never, I think maybe one minute. <laughs> and he said, I'd like to put together a group of world-class leaders, and that's what he's done. So good job, Steve. Come here. Thanks, uh, a couple of things happened this morning. 227,000 jobs. Great spirit in the country right now. So we're very happy about that. I think that uh, it's going to continue big league. We're bringing back jobs. We're bringing down your taxes. We're getting rid of your regulations. And I think it's going to be some really very exciting times ahead. We're going to be doing it. We're doing it. We're going to be coming up with uh, a tax bill very soon a health care bill even sooner, and uh, it's really working out. Toby from the Cleveland Clinic has been helping us a lot with the veterans, and we appreciate that, Toby. My pleasure. Uh, you've been amazing, and Ike and all of our friends, we really appreciate it. Uh, one of the things that I heard this morning in watching the news was that, amazingly, it's never happened before, that politics has become a much bigger subject than the Super Bowl. This is usually Super Bowl territory, and now they're saying that the politics is more interesting to people. So uh, that's good. I see we have Larry here. Where is Larry? I think Larry did a great job for me. He managed a lot of my money, and I have to tell you, he got me great returns, Larry. So. <laughs> and then they go crazy when we use very smart people that made money. Why don't you get other people to run the economy. I said, no, we have to get the right people. And the people that voted for me understand that, and that's what they want. So uh, when I campaigned for office, I promised the American people that I'd ask for our country's best and brightest, and we have that. Uh, Wilbur is representing us as Secretary. I tell you, you're going to be so great. Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, and just uh, Carl Icahn called up. He goes, I hear you got Wilbur. Everybody calls him Wilbur. I've never heard him called, we just know him as Wilbur, right? We have the great Jack Welch, the legendary Jack Welch. We appreciate it. Uh, we're looking forward in a little while, in the upcoming few moments, to discuss all of the things that you think we can do to bring back our jobs, to get taxes even lower than we're going to be cutting them. We have a great plan, but I want to have your input on the plan in particular and to do what we have to do in terms of regulation. We have some of the bankers here. There's nobody better to tell me about Dodd-Frank than Jamie, so you're going to tell me about it. But we expect to be cutting a lot out of Dodd-Frank because, frankly, I have so many people, friends of mine, that have nice businesses. They can't borrow money. They just can't get any money because the banks uh, just won't let them borrow because of the rules and regulations in Dodd-Frank. So we'll be talking about that, Jamie, in terms of the banking industry. Uh, and. With that, I just want to uh, introduce somebody I've known for a long time. He's done a fantastic job. And we're thinking of having these meetings. I think we'll start maybe uh, on a monthly basis. It'll go to a quarterly basis, because all of a sudden, a monthly basis sounds like a lot. But we really want your input. We have the biggest, the brightest in the world, in this country, in this case, 
We also have a manufacturing group, which is worldwide, where we have, as you know, great companies represented. But these are the biggest and the best minds in this country, and I really appreciate you being here, and I want to thank Steve, and Steve, maybe you'll say a few words. Sure. Well, I'd like to just start out and uh, thank everybody for being here. Uh, the purpose uh, of this group uh, it isn't for general discussion, uh, which is okay, but the real purpose is to get things done, uh, to advise uh, the government uh, as to areas where we can do things a lot better as a country for all Americans, uh, and uh, de bottleneck some things. Uh, we have a full uh, agenda, uh, unlike a lot of other meetings uh, that happen of this general type. Uh, we're we're going to cover some of the immigration things, uh, we're going to cover uh, regulatory relief. We're going to cover tax and trade, uh, women in the workplace, uh, infrastructure, and education. And uh, each of those areas will we'll get suggestions, ways to make things happen, happen faster, uh, to improve the country. Uh, and anybody can say anything else they want. Uh, <laughs> but it's really important that we mobilize uh, the non-governmental sector, and also importantly that we do it uh, on a bipartisan basis. Uh, apparently a first in Washington, uh, or a modern Washington, uh, and everybody on the group was selected because they're terrific, because they have domain expertise, uh, because they want the country to do better, uh, and we had no criteria. And as it works out, we have all kinds of different people from different backgrounds and different political persuasions. And if we can make things work right, that's the way the country's supposed to work. And so it's a big sacrifice for the people who are here to spend their time. Everybody's busy. Uh, that's America. Uh, so to put those things aside, to focus on this, not just for a meeting, but there's prep work that goes into any successful meeting, means these people uh, who, who <laughs> attended, taken the time to care about the country. Uh, and so that's the spirit uh, in which we're approaching things. I want to thank everybody on the committee. You're terrific. So thank you. Um, we're going to go around the room. But uh, before we do that, I just want to say that so many people have called friends of mine in big business. And they wanted to be in the committee. And I call Steve. I say, Steve, can we get so and so? No, we got enough. So what do you mean no? <laughs> it's a big business, massive business, you know, public company. Then every once in a while, I call Steve. How about this one? Donald, he's a corporate raider. These people don't want to be sitting with corporate raiders. So we have five raiders that wanted to come on, but uh, he's been very, very selective, and uh, we'll be putting a couple of more on as we go by, but he's been very selective. I thought we might go around the room. Mary and I met last week. We had a fantastic meeting on the auto industry. Uh, we had Ford there. We had uh, a lot of the companies. We had some great companies. Fiat, Chrysler, uh, Sergio. And uh, I will tell you, uh, I learned a lot about the automobile business. I thought I knew a lot. But they are being so stymied, so restricted with regulation and so many other reasons. And, uh, they're pouring back into the country already. I mean, if you look at Mark, who's telling us what they're doing with Ford and, uh, and Bill Ford, too. Uh, a lot of jobs are going to be coming back into Ohio and Michigan and uh, Pennsylvania and all of the places that really have been hurt so badly. So maybe we could start with Mary. We'll just go around the room real fast so that everybody, uh, pretty much everybody knows each other. But it would be nice to see. Mary? Mary Barra, Chairman and CEO of General Motors. Doug McMillan with Walmart. Larry Vink, BlackRock. Rich Lesser, Boston Consulting Group. Uh, Jim McNerney, the old Boeing guy. Paul Atkins, Potomac Little Park. Kevin Warsh, Stanford University. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, Tesla and SpaceX. Toby Cosgrove, the Cleveland Clinic. Jamie Diamond, Jason Morgan Chase. Dan Jurgen, IHS Market. And Jack Welch, retired. <laughs> Mark Weinberger, someday maybe, I hope, but uh, EY. Bio with the Global Infrastructure Partner. Jenny Rometty, IBM. Indra Nui, PepsiCo. Steve Schwarzman from Blackstone. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you, press.